Welcome to Digital Marketing Mondays. Thank you so much for tuning in. Whether you are watching, listening, or reading this content right now, we appreciate you following along on this journey. Uh, as you probably know by now, this show is specifically designed to help bring you, the marketer, uh, all the critical information about what's happening in the marketing world and how you can adjust your strategies accordingly to make sure that you are staying up on the best marketing uh, advice possible. Uh, my name is Devin Littlefield. And I'm Hans Riemer. And today we're going to talk about advertising on Facebook and actually using Facebook for your marketing. Does it make sense? All those kinds of things. So uh, why don't we launch into this? Uh, let's talk a little bit about Facebook as a platform for reaching your target audience, Devin. Um, yeah. how, how many people are there on Facebook these days? Or, you know, is it is it big? Is it little? Is it growing? Where, where are we at? I'll tell you, it's a lot. Um, based on the article that we read coming into this episode, it looks to be about 70% of all internet users around the globe. So... That's a lot of people. That's uh, that's that's hundreds of millions of people online using Facebook every day. Now, keep in mind, too, I think this article looks at all of Facebook owned entities. So this is not just the Facebook platform, but this is, you know, it includes WhatsApp. It includes Instagram. It includes, mm -hmm. you know, any anything that Facebook owns and touches at this point. Do you think that's, um, you know, are these people logging in daily? Are they spending time? Uh, what's the deal there? So that that's a doozy, and that's the thing. Facebook doesn't release data necessarily about their active number of daily users. They really mm. just report on total user, total usership, and, and user growth, uh, which is largely different, right? I mean, anecdotally, you think about the fact that there's a huge influx of um, older folks that came in after Facebook kind of got off the ground, all these kids were using it, they were having fun and good conversations. Uh, and then inevitably, you know, as, as most social networks happens to have or how it how works, you know, there's an influx of older folks who jump in on this platform and then the younger generation will typically leave. And I think that's kind of where we're at with the Facebook platform in, it, in itself. I think mm -hmm. the daily number of active users amongst you know anybody millennial and younger is nearly nearly nothing, right? Mm -hmm. I'm probably not, but I'm I'm exaggerating a little bit here. Uh, but I think a lot of those folks just have Facebook accounts that have just been sitting idly by for a while. I'm I'm an example of one of them. You know, I haven't okay. checked my Facebook in over six eight months. You know, and okay. and that's just part of my. I was life. on the There you go. So there you go, uh, not to not to show the apparent age age difference here yeah. between the two it of us. It is what it is, right? <laughs> it is what it is. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think I think Facebook won't ever really release that data because they they don't want people to know that, right? They don't they they want to make a really strong use case for people, you know, continuing to be on the platform, and you know, particularly for advertisers to continue. Uh, you know, advertising on these platforms, right? Because sure. that is how they make their money. It's through it's yeah. through ad revenue. So you're making a distinction here between the number of accounts that are created on Facebook and the number of active users, and you're saying that's quite a difference yeah. there. Okay, yep. yeah, that make, that makes a lot of sense. So um, so let's talk a little bit about basics of you know how if you if you decide you do want to use Facebook, how do you go about it? So. You know, I've heard a lot of people say, um, mm -hmm. you know, well, first of all, you could use it for free, right? Facebook is free. They don't charge any money. You create an yep. account and you can start putting stuff on there. And mm -hmm. then, you know, as you make more friends, you know, your friends see your stuff. So if you're and if you're a business, you can post things and people will presumably see your posts. So it's, you'll reach some mm -hmm. number of people out there. Um, <laughs> Pretty small. I've heard that, that that number has gone down over the years, right? You're not you're right, not right. reaching the whole world anymore, right? So. So yeah. Facebook encourages you, uh, says, oh, you can boost your post if you want to. So mm. why don't we talk about that for a minute? Does that is that a strategy that might make sense? You know, I, I think the only time that that may make sense is if you don't have any resources around you to help advertise. It's probably your first time ever doing it. Um, you're probably a local mom and pop shop of some kind and and it doesn't 
it doesn't necessarily, it, it's not part of any longer term strategy around your marketing, right? And at that point, boosting posts is probably applicable and probably okay, because you'll, you'll get higher reach that way. And that's probably what you wanted to begin with, right? 50 bucks, 100 bucks, and, and your post will get out there to more. So to create aware, creating awareness. Yeah, generally create creating awareness. awareness. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But I, I think for most serious you know, any any serious marketer, especially in, you know, high tech and SaaS, higher education, financial institutions, no, I, I do not think boosting posts will be beneficial at all. Okay. And really, it's because, to some extent, Facebook takes an automated bid approach when it comes to boosting posts. Um, you're usually, there's less autonomy around who you actually target. Um, and so it's just kind of shooting in the dark, partially partially um so yeah I, I i think for most of most clients at this point it's not recommended to really boost boost posts um especially you if, if you have a comprehensive strategy you do advertising instead so what's involved in doing advertising on facebook then uh definitely more involved i think what it really comes down to is really having a good understanding of your target market and knowing mm -hmm. first identifying whether they're actually on the platforms or not, mm -hmm. you know, take for instance, even the difference between Instagram and Facebook. If you were targeting that maybe mid twenties to 30 something, uh, young professional, let's call them, um, th Instagram might actually still be a g okay platform for building mm -hmm. awareness around. Uh, I, okay. but I would not recommend the same strategy around Facebook necessarily okay. and, and especially if you're targeting that younger crowd okay. um, but so i think really the heart of it is identifying your target demographic and and first making sure you you're clear on who that audience is and then tailoring tailoring that strategy appropriately uh by the platform okay. which at that point then it assuming that let's say you know facebook has the ideal audience like for credit unions as an example i think we see oftentimes that running running targeted ads for the even the 40 50 something bank switcher as we'll call them mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. with a really compelling call to action around you know uh, a one-time incentive or offer to switch from you know banks to save um or get a better interest rate right those actually do really well inside of facebook platform and it's because the audience is right the message is right um and there's a good incentive to boot right so that i think that makes sense but okay. as as another example, like some of my high tech clients or, or, you know, even SaaS companies, if you're targeting, if you're targeting director of, you know, director of sales, director of marketing for for specific companies, I, I do not think Facebook or mm -hmm. Instagram are going to be good platforms for you unless okay. your only goal, to be very clear, is brand awareness. So. Okay. I think it does just depend on on a, a number of dif different circumstances, but it all comes down to who's your target demographic. Are they on these platforms? Yes or no, mm -hmm. and that that will help kind of steer you from there. All right. So we've we've talked a little bit about you know if you're just you know you decide you want to advertise, do you use Facebook or not use Facebook? What about using Facebook um, as an adjunct to other platforms as well? So let's say we're doing search ads on Google. We're doing some targeted uh, B2B advertising on LinkedIn. Do you see Facebook playing a role in there uh, in, in a combination with other ad platforms? How would you do that? Yeah, I think again, I think it, it just partially depends on the overall strategy. But really, you know, it, that high tech SaaS client that I just mentioned a minute ago that is running Facebook ads right now, they're very clear. And, and the goal has been very clear from the beginning that it's a brand awareness play, right? Mm -hmm. It's just to drive some more eyeballs. They have the funding for it. it. It's perfectly fine to be to be spending the money to just help make sure that uh, their brand is seen by people a certain number of times. Mm -hmm. And with that goal in mind, I think the Facebook platform is perfect for them. Mm -hmm. uh, they also do have content to support both Facebook as a platform as well as Instagram as a platform. So I think it makes sense. Um, okay. I certainly wouldn't put all my, and, and in this case, we're not putting all of our eggs in that basket because right. that's not its goal, right? right? Its goal is to just keep, keep that brand kind of front and center and, and, and on top of mind for others. But I think that marketing, that marketing mix for most companies will just depend, um, you know, for credit unions, like I said before, I think Facebook is a great platform and I'd probably put a fair amount of the overall marketing and advertising resources into Facebook in addition to running Google ads or even um, 
you know, even other platforms as well. Okay. It, it all just comes down to that demographic mix and who you're trying to get after. Higher education, mm-hmm. um, I'd probably spend a little bit on Instagram in particular, but Facebook platform, it, it, if it's master's degree programs or even doctorate and you're trying to promote those, then sure, Facebook will be fine. But if you're really just going after traditional undergrad, then a little bit in Instagram will go a long ways, but really... TikTok and Snapchat are where it's at for that younger crowd, mm-hmm. for sure. Mm-hmm. As, especially unless, TikTok. Unless you're targeting their parents, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Unless you're targeting their parents to help them make a decision, absolutely. So, right. yeah. Then it also comes down to strategy too, which I yeah. I think that's a good strategy. I like that yeah. idea. Cool. All right. Well, thanks, Devin. This is uh, this has been great. Thanks so much for uh, for uh, giving us this information about Facebook. And, absolutely. Um, and I think we're we're going to wrap. We'll hopefully we'll see you everybody everybody next Monday uh, on our yep. next show. So thanks for watching. Yeah, thank you all for tuning in, and uh, we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.